Look, man, I just want people to kill each other. I just wish you guys understood. All right, so I guess I'm doing this. Here I go, I'm about to freak the flow. About the Cartoon Network and things they show. We got the super adventures, tune heads, and late night. It's black and white, but everything's all right. But I'll break it down a little bit more. Tell you what they have in store with his tunes you're looking for. We got Fred Flintstone and Barney Rubble. My man. We're gonna get killed by Murder Barbie. Let's talk about this bonkers film. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with Freaky Friday. It's a standard body swap story. A mom and a daughter swap bodies through some kind of magic. Sometimes it's a witch, sometimes it's racism. But in most cases, they each spend a day in each other's bodies and learn like little nuances about each other's situations. Yeah, like that's cool and everything, but hear me out. What if instead of a wholesome family adventure where a mother and a daughter come to understand each other, it's about a psychopath who swaps bodies with a teen so he can slaughter a high school? That, my friends, is Freaky. Freaky is a 2020 horror film produced by Blumhouse, which might signal one or two flags for you guys. On one hand, it's the studio that produced Get Out, but on the other hand, it produced all of the Purge movies. So, uh, you know, layers. It's like ogres and shit. I didn't know what to expect from this movie when I first saw it. When I think horror, right, I don't normally think of Vince Vaughn or Emily from Dog with a Blog. Stan, I need your help. It's about Emily, the beast, who it turns out is gorgeous. Called it! This is the only time I'll ever bring up Dog with a Blog, so savor it, I guess. So is it good? Let's find out. Oh, I guess for this one, I'm your host and unwilling participant, D'Angelo Edwards, and today I'm taking my hat off to Freaky. <laughs> Yo, I've always wanted to say that, bro. Blissfield Butcher started its reign of terror in 1977, and it continues to this day. A geriatric serial killer? Really? Alright, so what's this thing about? First off, it starts with the Universal logo, but this time, it's tinted red! Cause blood! <laughs> yeah. Kinda just starts with like a little mini movie instead of the actual movie with some scenes just kinda screwing around in white suburbia just begging to be murdered. Hey, two of them even fucking can't do that in a horror movie, read the room! And we don't have to wait long because it turns out that the legend of the Blissfield Butcher that they were discussing, uh, yeah, he's real. <laughs> And after some particularly creative kills, the butcher is revealed to be Fred Claus. See, I knew I always preferred Elf. But the butcher steals a weird dagger from the house. And that's when we move on to our second lead character, Millie. Millie is a girl that recently lost her dad, which I guess is a recurring theme in these Freaky Friday movies, who lives with her grieving mom and her policewoman's sister. She's frequently bullied by like students and teachers alike, especially her shop teacher who has this weird hate boner for her. Can I just do it 16? Can I just do it 16? Speak up. But at least she has her two best friends, who for me are one of the movie's highlights, even if her gay best friend can be a little stereotypical. I'm in it for the drunk straight boys who will suddenly realize they're fluid. And at least the boy Millie likes is like actually nice to her. So while not everything is going great for Millie, she does got some like nice things going on in her life. and. I wish her the best, but on the other hand, she has a Pitch Perfect 2 poster in her room, so, uh... Ah! <laughs> you are tough, the street. The butcher stabs her with the weird dagger he found. And, after awaking the next day, the two realize that they've swapped bodies. With Millie being in the hunky, hunky shit. With Millie being in the hulky, very underrest body of the butcher, and the butcher now having the perfect disguise of Millie's body. From this point on, it's a race to get the dagger and stab the butcher again by midnight, or else Millie will be stuck in his body forever. 
It's a really cool setup for a horror movie. Not only does the butcher being in Millie's body give him the perfect cover, but it puts him in a position to be near a lot of victims. But the catch is that now he doesn't have the crazy ape strength that he used to. So now he has to get a little bit more creative. It's a great setup that paves the way for plenty of fun laughs and cool kills. So let's talk a little bit about the stuff I really love. First off, I gotta give it to Vince Vaughn and Catherine Newton. They're great in their normal roles, but once the bodies get switched... Not what you think. Oh! Come on! Both. I got both. That's when it starts to get good. Seeing Millie wake up in what seems to be your standard single male apartment, and then proceeding to freak out all in Vince Vaughn's giant six foot five body is hilarious, and the jokes just keep coming. She likes how strong she is now. She's trying not to hit her head on literally everything. And oh yeah, she has to deal with the fact that she's literally wanted for murder. Vince does a great job emulating a teen. You really feel like they switch bodies and it's just so much fun to watch. I know I called it a horror film earlier, but it's basically just like a black comedy. Yeah, there's some sick stuff happening, but also it's funny to watch her pee in his body. You guys gotta see this, this is like a floppy anteater. The fuck, this nigga got me. <laughs> <laughs> you got me reading, bro. <laughs> On the other hand, Catherine Newton is out killing it as the butcher, literally. The butcher wastes no time getting to work. Although he does take a moment to update Millie's outfit, which I find hilarious. Like, Millie couldn't dress for nothing before, but the second she's possessed by a 50-year-old man, all of a sudden she got style? I don't know if Millie can recover from that. Newton plays her role perfectly, adding all of the Jason and Michael Myers that she can to this role. The camera is even framed, so she looks a little taller in shots now. It's a cool little touch. Besides the main character, I also really like a bunch of the side characters. Like I said before, I really like the best friends. You can tell they would do anything for each other. And after they come to terms with the fact that Millie is now in the butcher's body. I'm so sorry. Let's just talk. Guys. Really? They help her out with switching back. And again, even though he does lean into stereotypes a bit, the gay best friend was constantly making me laugh. And he gets some great lines off. Okay, um, mom, I, I didn't want to tell you until I was ready, but I'm straight. I don't know, man, what can I say? I like my beer cold, my TV loud, and my homosexuals flaming. The rest of the cast is filled out pretty nicely too, though nothing as good as the people I already mentioned. I'm not saying they're bad, just that everybody else just really steals the show. I'll give a special shout out to Millie's teacher who just hates her guts for no reason. Like, they never explain it. But it's fine, especially once he gets cut out of her life. Eventually, the crew learns that the knife is a magic knife called the Ladula. Ladola. I don't know how to say that shit. And that they have to stab the butcher in Millie's body to switch back, which leads to some rough situations. The most unrealistic being the black friend sneaking into the police office to get the knife. I'm just saying, I could buy a magical knife or whatever, but that wouldn't fly. <laughs> the friends even bring up that in a normal horror movie, they wouldn't even last two seconds. You're black, I'm gay, we are so dead! But hey, it's called fiction for a reason. Even if the butcher is mostly just your standard fun slasher villain, I actually like what they did with Millie a lot. She starts off super meek, living her life for everyone but herself. She's even afraid to go to college because she doesn't want to leave her mom. But once she's in the butcher's body, she starts to get a little confidence. But once in her life, she feels strong inside and out. And little by little, she starts to change. She starts standing up the bully. She confesses to her crush, leading to a very uncomfortable scene. Thank God I'm blind. She even talks things out with her mom, even though uh, she has to do so in the butcher's body, which almost leads to her getting asked out on a date. But by the end of the movie, she's basically carried all of that over to her old body. Once she, and spoilers here, gets her body back, the butcher makes one last attempt to kill her. But this is a brand new Millie, leading to a confrontation with Millie, her mom, and her sister, with Millie getting the killing blow. And so yeah, that's freaky. 
a very fun, unique little slasher comedy that kind of shocked me with how fresh it felt. It has a couple of off-brand jokes and, again, needs a little less gay stereotypes. But I think this thing had a lot of heart. But more importantly, it has a lot of blood. Some really good kills in this thing. It's a perfect blend of Saved by the Bell and Friday the 13th, which, one more quick thing. This movie is basically about Friday the 13th, but it has a fake start that kills me. So yeah, Freaky is a blast. And I'm not just saying that because I'm trapped in this fucking puppet body. And you know what? Speaking of which, can I go now? <laughs> I learned my lesson, bro. I learned it. All right, fine. Life isn't all just about family guy and insecure. There's like, there's other good stuff out there, I guess. What? That wasn't enough? What? What? F that wasn't enough? Nah, man. You know what? Nah, fuck. I'm taking it back. You gonna tell me son is better than Ain't nothing better than Insecure, bro. You know, Lisa, Lawrence, Family Guy, you got Peter, you got Brian. Oh, uh, I guess the timing was just off. Uh, anyway, while y'all here, uh, Dario video was coming out on.